Look at this 3D character I made. You wanna know how I made it? Well, that's what we're talking about today. Hey, I'm Cage from Cubepunks, and for the past year, I've been on and off again studying how to use the 3D modeling software Blender. The professional motivation being that when I need to communicate with 3D artists, I will know the proper terminology, and the personal motivation being that I can use 3D to enhance my cartoons. On top of that, at some point down the road, I want to get into 3D printing so I can make my own overpriced toys instead of paying $100 for Big the Cat over here. <laughs> When studying all of this, I noticed the trend that I was more inspired and my taste gravitated towards projects that implemented non-photorealistic rendering, aka NPR, and I had less interest in chasing after photorealism or, say, a Pixar style. I personally resonate a lot more with the visuals of Jet Set Radio, Arc System Works games, Mega Man Legends, Team Reptile games, and anything in that general ballpark. On top of that, I do not have much experience adhering to a quote-unquote low-poly aesthetic. So I figured why not do a little bit of practice on that and explore some NPR shaders. This video right here is not a tutorial, but rather a documentation of my process. It shows the steps I took and my reasoning behind each choice. Maybe I'm presenting something insightful, or maybe you're somebody who understands 3D a lot better than me and you're going to point out a critical error I just made. But either way, someone is going to be learning here. That being said, if you are looking for introductory lessons for Blender, I highly recommend this Skillshare course. No, this is not an ad. It's actually a really good resource. Okay, first off, we need a character. Let's go with Sammy, a design that I've had for years that's kind of more or less involved into my mascot. She's a design I'm very familiar with and one I've taken stabs at making in 3D before. For a reference, I landed on Roll from Mega Man Legend, given some design similarities and the game aligning with my criteria. Note, I am not making a model in the style of that same game. Rather, I want to have a model that I can learn from and then also I can compare my completed model in terms of quality to. Next off, we need some turnarounds. The blueprints that go into making the mesh of a 3D model. Fire up Clip Studio Paint and draw her from all the angles I need. If I was going to hand this off to another person, I would have cleaned up the lines a little bit. But since it's just me, eh, who cares if it's a little messy. Alright, let's drop the turnarounds into Blender, load up Roll's models, and get crack into it. In Mega Man Legends, two different models were used for both gameplay and cutscene sections of the game. And while I took influence from both, I ultimately leaned on the side of using the game play model. After this, I started building Sammy's geometry and doing some studying on how Roll was made. Here are some interesting findings that I incorporated into my thing. First off, Mega Man Legends has no lighting engine as far as I can tell. As far as I can tell, no shadows are being actually projected, but rather, they are all facades created by some texturing on top of simple geometry. And by simple geometry, I mean simple. Like the torso and limbs are just cubes stretched to be the right length. The most complex features are the hair and the face, and even then, that's a bunch of clever texturing. The other thing with the geometry is that there's a lot less connections than you would expect. See, in modern standards, the majority of a character will be a singular mesh that gets deformed by a skeleton. Think silicone around a bendy action figure with its wire on the inside. However, most games in this era didn't use deformation and opted out for creating segments that rotated. Think joints on action figures with invisible hinges. So while I expected this to be a bunch of overlapping shapes, the amount of shapes that are overlapping is a lot larger than I expected. Like how the nose is stuck on like a snowman clipping through the head itself. This is where I started deviating from my reference. First off, I made the nose and the head the same mesh. Also, the approach towards texturing while inspired by Mega Man Legends isn't the same at all. Mega Man Legends had low resolution textures with minimal anti-aliasing, resulting in a cohesive pixelated look. The way my Sammy model is being rendered within Blender has anti-aliasing. So if I made the textures pixelated, it would clash with the looks of the flat, straight slopes and edges that don't conform to any visible grid. So I decided to make the textures a higher resolution, but then I ran into another problem. If I made the face have a bunch of rounded curves, that would clash with the rest of the model being made out of only sharp angles. What I settled on was making the textures out of a bunch of straight lines, reinforcing the polygonal shapes. The edges on these textures are going to be smooth as well, thus matching the edges of the polygon also being smooth. 
Another point where I deviated from Mega Man Legends is how the shadows were done. Visually, the result is very similar, making the shadows be textures and not part of a lighting engine. But unlike Mega Man Legends, the division of light and dark isn't drawn on by the texture, but rather a polygon. There's a video where, I'm going to butcher this name, Unia Mutomura talked about Arc System Works' approach towards the visuals in Guilty Gear Xard. In the presentation, it covers how when the team was creating close-ups, cinematic animations, or cutscenes, any time when the model needed to be right up to the camera, pixelation started showing on the textures and it clashed with the smooth of the polygon. So the team employed unconventional texture techniques to avoid this, making them able to get as close to the camera as they want. If that video sounds interesting to you at all, I have a link to it available right now. There's a lot of interesting and insightful information that can inspire you. And taking that inspiration I got from the video, I cut the polygons in half and colored the side closer to the back darker. The result being Mega Man Legends shadow placement without the lines ever getting jagged or fuzzy. This may increase the poly count a little bit, however, on any system as strong as a Nintendo GameCube or a PlayStation 2, it should be running fine still. It's not really exceeding the poly count that much. Anyway, I tossed on some uh, really crappy rigging then, so I was able to pose it for some renders. However, note this rigging would have to be entirely redone if it was ever going to be used in an animation or a video game. Then do some minor tweaks on the models and be bop boom, she's done. In some ways, this was easier than working with high-res models. Less steps to complete uses mostly basic tools, fast turnaround, and your end product more easily avoids going into the uncanny valley. On the other hand, however, I found it was actually a bit harder doing this. Trying to get appealing shapes on, say, the hair and face while also keeping it stylistically sharp is pretty tricky. There's a fine line between low resolution high poly and just the low poly aesthetic. The thing that I really struggled with is making the legs actually connect. And in general, the way that they sit on a pelvis and connect to the muscle groups is really complicated. Take a look at some action figures. You'll quickly see that they have a much easier time figuring out how to connect the shoulders than how to connect the leg to hip. The best answer I could come up with is making the bottom of the pelvis completely flat and having a large amount of the leg clip inwards. If you know of any better solutions that are stylistically appropriate and compatible, definitely let me know. I'm interested in this one. But overall, this is a really enjoyable style and I want to refine it in the future. Recently, a tool called PicoCAD popped up on the scene tailored directly towards low poly pixel textured models. I hope to find some time to mess around with it and see if I can get better results than I did with Blender. If you want to see that comparison video, let me know. And well, unfortunately this is the time of the video where I have to uh, utter the YouTube words of death, so brace yourself on this one. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, bell. We also make animations, games, and music, so if that sounds cool to you, check out our other videos on Cute Punks. Hasta luego.